folks. All right, here we go. Here's another basic structure of programming. Uh, looping. Uh, the best thing about looping is that you can repeat code. What do I mean by that? Well, if you were to make a line, let's say, and let's say you wanted that line to start at the origin, so here's x, y, and then you wanted it to hit some other random point on the screen. Well, that's nice, but let's say you needed to draw a picture, say, architectural picture, uh, and you needed to draw like 600 lines. Well, the best thing you've got right now is copy, paste, copy, paste, uh, copy, paste, and make a new line for each one, and derp, 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 derp. I mean, this is only three. Uh, I could keep going and do a whole bunch, but uh, this is going to be awful, because now I have to say, well, that, well, okay, this is the first line, but this one actually goes to 1544, and this one actually goes to 64.2. I mean, you've got to go in there and do all of that yourself. Um, and if there's a pattern to how these lines work, we can actually use a loop uh, to make this happen faster. So let me show you a loop. Uh, there are two kinds. There's a for loop and there's a while loop. Uh, we're going to specify uh, the for loop first and then we'll talk about the while loop. Uh, both of these work pretty much the same way. Notice here that um, processing is changing their colors because they are keywords. Uh, the for loop in the parentheses are the sort of conditions. So it's going to be where we start, when do we end, and how do we get there. In the curly brackets, what you're going to see is uh, the code to be repeated. Okay, that is how a loop works. So if we want to draw a bunch of these lines, this is what we're going to have to do. Uh, instead of coding a, a million lines, uh, a million line of lines of code, let's just put it all in here. So let's say line 0, 0, uh, I don't know, 13, 14. And if we run this code, actually, nothing's going to happen. Uh, we haven't specified a size of the screen. Uh, it doesn't really know uh, what we're talking about. So let's specify a size. Let's give it 300 by 300. Uh, let's specify a stroke. Uh, I don't know. Let's make it like vaguely gray. Let's specify a background of you know, 100. And let's see what it thinks of. We'll have to get rid of this here because it doesn't actually work yet. Ah, and so it doesn't really work. So we have to specify a little bit better. Uh, what are these start and stop points? And for a for loop, you have to use a variable. In fact, we're going to use uh, use an index variable uh, to tell where you are in the loop. And we're going to use the variable i. What I mean by that is this. Start off with a variable i. We'll call it um, an, an integer. And we're going to have it equal 0. Uh, where do we want it to end? Well, we want it to end, uh, this is a condition. So let's say, I don't know, let's do it a bunch of times. Uh, you know, 600 times, right? That's what we were talking about. So i is going to be less than or equal to 600. Um, actually, less than. We'll use less than or equal just to let 600 in there into the party. And then how do we get there? This is the next, this is the most complicated statement. We want to say i is going to get there by changing by 1. So we're going to say i equals i plus 1. Okay, so now this code is going to repeat actually 601 times uh, because zero counts, and you're going to end up with a whole bunch of lines on the screen. But this doesn't, you know, it's not a very good program. This isn't this isn't the kind of code you'd really like to repeat. Maybe it is, but you can't see it. All we really did was print 600 of the exact same line. 601 on top of each other. What we'd really like to do is somehow programmatically have this shift. An easy way to do that would be to change all of these to random numbers, right? So uh, have this be random from 0 to the width of the screen. And have the, the beginning y coordinate be random from 0 to the height of the screen. So now we're making random numbers. And we'll do the exact same thing uh, for the end point of our line. So copy paste. Let's make sure all our commas are good here, all our parentheses are squared up. And now if we run this code, we're going to see 600 uh, randomly drawn lines. Uh, so that's nice. So we just got all of this output. Uh, I don't know what we're trying to make here. It looks like a spider web, I guess. Uh, we're getting uh, these randomly drawn lines uh, from this much code. So we're doing pretty good. Uh, this would have had to have been at least 600 lines of code, probably more like 605. Uh, so you're really doing better here uh, by using a loop. Uh, you can change how many repetitions if you want. Let's you know make it just 60. 
and now we're going to get 61 lines, which looks, you know, quite different. Um, how, how is this working? Well, what's happening is I is starting at 0, and then it's checking to see if it's less than 60. And it is, so it runs this code. Then it steps I up based on what you put here. Well, it goes up by 1. So now I is 1, and it says, well, is that less than 60? Yeah. Then it steps it up again. Is 2 less than 60? Yep. Steps it up again. Is 3? Is 4? Is 5? It gets all the way up to 60, and finally it steps it through and gets to the 60, gets to where I is 61, and it says, nope, 61 is greater than 60. Uh, and then it exits the program. So it exits, uh, exits the loop here and then moves on to the next line of code. So really what you're getting yourself for, you know, three lines here, you're getting any number of repetitions of lines of code. Uh, that's really, really cool. There are many, many other ways to do this. Uh, so you could say step up by two, and now we're only going to get 30 lines, because I gets to 61, or actually 62, much faster. Okay? The second kind of loop is the while loop, and we can do the exact same thing uh, with a while loop, except while loops are easier. They say, while this is true, do this. Okay, that's how it reads in English. While the stuff in parentheses is true, do the stuff in the curly brackets. Okay, so what do we want to do? I don't know, let's print some more lines, maybe some rectangles just for giggles. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's print some rectangles, I don't know, just for fun. So while what is true? Well, while, let's go back and use I again, because we already created it right here. While I is, let's say, uh, less than 100, let's print some rectangles. So we'll make some rectangles, and we'll use our, you know, uh, we'll use our random again here. Okay, let's make sure that we got this coded right. So now we have the x and y position is going to be random, and the uh, width and height are going to be random uh, based on this. You don't have to do it randomly. We're just doing this to show you how the, the code repeats. But the problem is, this loop will actually run forever. Uh, do you see that? Um, when i exits here, its value is 61. Well, actually, in this case, it'll be 62. So it'll exit here. At this point in the code, i is equal to 62. Well, then it comes down here to the while. It says, well while i is less than 100, do this code. Well, after this line, after this loop, i never changes, so this will never, ever, ever get to 100. So you need to actually add some code into your loop uh, to change the code. So let's say i equals i plus 1. And now we're going to get the you know, difference between 62 and 100 um, re repetitions of rectangles. So here we go. With this tiny lines of code, I can't find anything named i. Oh, interesting. So if I declare i in here, it actually doesn't get out of the program. Now that's interesting. What happens if I declare it up here? int i equals 0. Then we can get rid of the declaration down here. Let's see if it, now it knows. Ah, uh, now it knows. <laughs> So you can see here we have a bunch of lines, and then we have a bunch of rectangles drawn on top of them. I don't know what this picture represents. Uh, nothing. We're just kind of messing around with loops. Uh, what's interesting about this is that uh, if we don't declare the variable outside of the loop, then the loop owns the variable, and it actually doesn't get out. So what I told you before is a little bit wrong unless we uh, declare this variable up here. So now i belongs to the whole program. And it's not in any specific construct, like a for or an if or anything like that. So that's the basics of loops. Uh, looping gets pretty fancy, and I'll, uh, I'll show you some fancier loops within the context of other projects later. But here's the, the very fundamental basics. Enjoy.